What is up you guys and welcome back to my channel. So for those who are new here, my name is Nicole. I'm now a third year teacher and I'm gonna take you along with me of how I teach 3D shapes. So luckily for me, we kind of got a head start last week on Friday because we only had a two day week. So this week we're really gonna be hitting on the content and then testing on Thursday. So if you wanna see how I get ready to teach 3D shapes, then just keep watching. When I teach 3D shapes, I do look at my teaks Teaks are specific to Texas only. It's the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. It's pretty much what we need to teach and how to teach it. So let's go look at what our teak for this week specifically says. This is what I imagine every day. So I went through and I highlighted our action words. So action words are what establishes a teak based on the Bloom's taxonomy, which I will go over in a second. So I look at those action words and I highlight them in a different color. So in this case, I had highlighted them pink. So our action words for eight point B, it's classify and sort. And then eight point D is to compose. So those are the action words. And then the teak is three-dimensional solids, including spheres, cones, cylinders, rectangular prisms, including cubes as special rectangular prisms and as triangular prisms based on attributes and using geometric language. So we need to sort and classify those. And then the students need to compose three-dimensional solids with given properties of attributes. Now that was a lot of heavy vocabulary and it probably seemed like a jumbled mess to some, but what that means is we just need to know as the second graders how to classify and sort 3D shapes based off of their attributes. Attributes are just characteris characteristics of how they describe a shape. So those are your faces, edges, and vertices. Compose them, that's a higher level Bloom's taxonomy. It's um, where they can create it. Check down the action word and then my on level was understanding what 3D shapes is and you know the attributes. A higher level would be to apply which is using the information in new situations. My lower level is just remembering, it's recalling facts and basic concepts. So that's a good way of how you can differentiate based on the levels of what your students need. For A point D, it is a higher level um, concept because they have to create. Create is at the very top of the triangle of Bloom's taxonomy. So it's a very high level thing. They need to get their hands on. This is great for uh, concrete when we're doing our CRA model. So the action words for 8.D is to compose. Again, this is creating a higher level. Now here's what I was taught. Because we are already at the top of the triangle, you don't want to just stay there. What you want to do for your high level students is go down to remember. So we're calling a facts, but you want to make it to a third grade standard. So that's how you can get those higher students. It's just by going up a level to the kids. Then um, for your lower level, it's just evaluate. They just need to justify how do they know that that's a sphere? So things like that. So I like to do this because it truly makes me understand what is expected of these students as a third grade, or previously I was a third grade teacher, so of course they had STAR test, which is the state standardized test for the third graders, fourth and fifth and up. So I know that they like to test 3D shapes and I know attributes and all of these high level vocab words are mentioned in it. So I like to talk to my students in an academic language. That way they're just accustomed to it. If they come by and they see an attribute, they know, oh, that's my faces, edges, and vertices. So we, I like to do this a lot. So what we're gonna do now is I actually already have the copies made and ready to go. We're just gonna put them out so I can just grab it and give it to my kiddos. Okay, so 
So if we are starting today on Monday, what I'd like to do is give the kids an opportunity to be hands-on with the material. In a perfect world, perfect scenario, I would have nets, which we do talk about in our lesson today. I would have nets already cut out, ready to go for the kids, and then they would have to compose it and actually make a paper 3D model. Unfortunately, we just don't have the time today to do it. I'm gonna try to see if I can create a center based off of it. So today, the kids and I are gonna go over what nets are. This is a really good way of showing, hey, your 2D shapes that you learned about can be applied to 3D shapes. So like your previous knowledge is so important. So then we have a couple of pages where we go over nets and attributes and all that fun stuff. Um, Friday, let me see if I have it. Friday, what we did is we had, what does the figure say? And so they have like this little booklet that we made and they just went through and we identified what the faces are, what the edges are, and then how many uh, vertices there are. So they can use this throughout the lesson. Um, and depending on how well they are proficient with it, I will allow this on the test as well, just because I feel like my students truly would use it in an effective way. So they have that for them at all times, which anything that I mentioned, I'm gonna try to find the link for and provide it down below because I don't own rights to any of this. It was, um, I bought it and then I use it in my classroom. So, so what we do is our packet, it's pretty much like the meat and potatoes of it. I mentioned this in my lesson plan uh, video previously, which you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out. I'll link it down below for y'all. But my packet, my students know like this is what we do on a daily basis. So math class is separated into four sections. You have your basic facts, which is your addition subtraction problems. When you get up into higher grade levels, it'll be um, multiplication and division. Then your problem solving, which I call tummy time, is word problems. How can you look at a word problem and pick out that key information to know what you need to do? Skills is just tying in old information into it. And then you get to like the concept part, which is like the majority of your lesson. So we do pack it. I think this works out very well because I tell the kids in our weekly slides, because I have a daily slide that goes over everything, which I'll show you how I set up this week. Um, our daily slides tells the kids specifically, oh, you need to go to net pages two, which this specific packet was in a program called Sharon Wells. Um, we still have access to parts of Sharon Wells and previous years, that's pretty much what we use fully. Um, I truly love Sharon Wells. I think it's a great way for the students to truly be prepared for the star test, even at younger levels. Like it does have a lot of critical thinking skills into it and problem solving skills into it. So I, I truly love Sharon Wells. It's a great resource. It's mostly used in Texas because that's what they gear towards. Um, but I think it's still really great. So then, we go through our packet, my kids use their booklet. Then on Wednesday, depending on if we have time, which I think we will. Um, now, remind you, I am departmentalized, so I only teach math and science, and every teacher lesson plans for a different subject. My team lead actually lesson plans for math, so she made all these copies and gave it to us. So I'll ask her where everything is from. So on Wednesday, this is just an option for us to do, but I think it'll be really good to gauge and gear where the kids are actually at. So it's just simple problems for the kids to answer independently. I think I'm gonna have them, oh, how do I wanna do this? I kinda wanna make this a little bit more fun, but I don't know how to do that. So we'll get back to that. We might do it to where they can like stick it on a sticky note or tape it up somewhere and do all that. Cause I like to get the kids out of the seats because who wants to be in a seat all day? especially my rambunctious, energetic little bodies of a nine and 10 year old. I love them, I swear. Okay, and then also, I think they're gonna really like this because they like games. I have a very competitive group and they just make my heart so happy because I'm also competitive too. So we just have a shapes game that we'll give the kids. I will put this in a protect, uh, sheet protector, which I'll link down the ones that I have because they're fantastic. I use it for literally everything. So we'll do that on Wednesday, just to like 
make it a little bit fun. And then on Thursday, Thursday we're supposed to be doing our graded assignment, which is right here. So we'll just have to identify the shapes to the correct name. And then on the back, this is where they can do their attributes. So they need to know the name and they need to figure out how many faces does it have or how many vertices, how many edges. So that's just kind of really good review because there's a lot of questions like that on the test. Get it. Okay. And then I think they will have so much fun with this game. It's a headband game. And they um, will just have it like, I'll cut these out and I'll have it in the middle of the table for the kids. And that way, like all of them are facing down and they'll just have to pick it up and be like, okay, how many vertices do I have? And the kids will tell them. So then that's where this book will come into play with it. So I think they'll like this game. I'm gonna make it to where they have to ask a couple more questions associated with it because there's a lot of combining. Like if you combined a the vertices on a um, triangular prism in a cube, how many vertices would you have? So it's like knowing combining means that you need to add. So it's those key factors I just kind of want to push more on. But yeah, okay, so. Let me go put, put all of this back because my desk is a hot mess express and we need to fix that. Okay, I am gonna go ahead and end off the video here. I truly hope this kind of like shined a little light of what more teachers do when preparing for lessons. I love giving advice to other teachers, especially when it comes to this. I, almost every summer that I've been a teacher, I've gone to conferences. The one conference that I learned most of the information I just taught y'all is the Get Your Teach On Conference. Y'all, it is so much fun. Like I have no affiliation to Get Your Teach On, but it made that much of an impact that the things that I learned in that um, training, I still use today. And I love it. They give you resources, everything. It is a little bit on the pricier side, but it is so, so worth it. Like those classes that you, you don't get to choose your classes. They assign it to you, but the classes are truly geared to make you more effective as a teacher in the school. So I truly love it. I always recommend get your teach on because it it's truly impactful not only do they have really good motivational speakers they have great teachers who go in and teach y'all more about it it's phenomenal i can't say enough about it so i'll link it down below they do have their next regional one in las vegas and then they have their national one which is in the summertime in orlando so love it it's fantastic i'll link down everything down below i'm even going to create a spreadsheet of a beautiful lesson plan for the um week so you can use it in case you need it or i'm also going to provide the um resources as well so anything i've talked about in this video i'll link it down below for y'all but if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can join our little family but i love you so much and i can't wait till our next adventure bye guys Cause I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, I'm not